performance. Oh, I like this car, it's very enjoyable to drive. I'm glad you like it. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage, the car we're featuring today, a 1971 Marcos. To my eye, this is one of the prettiest, the most unusual sports cars of all time. This comes from that sort of golden age of uh, car building in the mid, late 50s, mid 60s in England. There were so many manufacturers doing all sorts of unusual things. This car has a lot of unusual features. Uh, the styling being one of them, it, it really is unique. I, I think it's just great looking. It uses a variety of power plants. Let's bring in the owner. He's a proper Englishman who should own a car like this. His name is Fraser Douglas, and we'll learn more about it. Fraser, how you doing? Hello, how are you? Good to see you. Good, Good to, to see, see you. you. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for bringing this. You know, as I always say on this website, uh, the fun thing about having this YouTube show is I'll go to car shows and I'll see something. I'll go, hey, can we get this on my show? Sure, and he was kind enough to bring it over. Because you just don't see these very often in America. People are not familiar with the car, not familiar with the company. The most unusual feature, at least the early cars, actually had a plywood chassis, right? That's right, they had 386 different plywood pieces that were laminated together. They were very strong, Yeah. but in the end, they had to switch to steel chassis because they were so expensive to produce those chassis. Yeah, I just like the idea that you can go to lumber depot yeah. and pick up some chassis pieces for your car. Well, they went to the hardware store and just glued yeah. it all together. But <laughs> the advantage of the plywood was it was extremely light. Yeah. I mean, this is before carbon fiber. Fiberglass was heavy. Uh, well, fiberglass couldn't make a chassis out of it, really. But it worked. They were strong. They were very strong. And the reason they did it was because uh, one of the uh, founders of the company, Frank Costin, right. worked on the de Havilland Mosquito fighter bomber during the war. And so a lot of cars in that era were, were based around wooden chassis. And, and of course, this famously was one of them. Well, I've got a 27 liter Merlin engine out of de Havilland Mosquito. Oh. So I, kn I was a little familiar with that. And I know the <laughs> name. And he, wasn't he an aerodynamicist as he was. well? He was. Because he did this shape with the cam back tail. It really is truly a striking sports car. And if you get the size of it, uh, well, I'm uh, not quite six feet, you are. So you, you can judge from how small it is, just from us standing next to it. And what does it weigh? Maybe 16, 1,700 pounds? Yeah, they're very light. And it is actually only officially 43 inches off the ground as well. Okay. So it's a very low car. Uh, as you'll find out when you try and get in it. Yeah, yeah, well, I haven't gotten in it yet, <laughs> so we're gonna save that. And I remember they came with a variety of power plants. I remember the early cars used the Volvo four-cylinder. And what engine does this one have? Well, this is a Ford three-liter V6. Oh, big motor. Big motor, because this was one of the last um, variations of the car before they went out of business in 72. Right. But you're right, they started off with the P1800 engine uh, with the wooden chassis back in 1964. And what, Volvo gearbox as well? Volvo gearbox as well, and then they evolved with Volvo engines and also with pre-crossflow engines. The engines got slightly bigger. This is the Ford 3.0-litre V6. During this era, they also had the 3.0-litre Volvo engine, the B30 engine oh, okay. as well, which is also a very good engine. Did they run Triumph motors at one point? I remember seeing yeah. one when I was a kid. It's just not a car you see every day on the street. And when I no. saw yours at the show, I mean, there were all these Ferraris and Lamborghinis, and I went, oh, Marcos, and I went over to him right away, and I was just so impressed with it. Because when you see this, I mean, uh, a modern Lamborghini Ferrari, uh, it looks like uh, some sort of a <laughs> crossover pickup or something. There. I mean, they're way up here, they're uh, high. Battleships, they're yeah, huge, yeah, aren't where they? This thing just kind of slithers in. Yeah, yeah. Under and, the radar. Oh, no, it's just fantastic. Yeah. Can we open the hood and Absolutely. see what it looks yeah, like? Absolutely, yeah, let's just, do that. I see you've got hood locks here. Do we need to unlock those or no? No, they should be open. Boy, that's a, boy, they get that engine in there, don't they? And I imagine modern V6 is this size. You could get a lot of horsepower out of this thing, couldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. I think the horsepower on this is only at about 155, something right. like that. Not huge, but of course, it's, it's a very light car. Now, obviously, later incarnations of this, the Mantulas had Rover V8s right. from the uh, Range Rovers and things, which are, you know, very, very big. Five speed or four speed? This is a four speed with overdrive. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Very nice. Yeah. So it's fast enough. Now, what is this box here? What does that do? Well, this is one of the most interesting things about Marcos is that the seats are not adjustable, they're fixed. Uh, 
Uh, Jim Marsh, who was the founder of the company, the co-founder, was a very tall man. He was six foot four. So to account for different size of, uh, of drivers, the pedal box is adjustable. Oh, okay. There's a dial underneath the dash that you move, and the pedal box moves forward. Moves the pedal back for, Okay, and that's yeah. under... Oh, that's, isn't that something? That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, I know when I got my Dodge Viper in 92, they had that feature. Oh, that's very cool, isn't it? Yeah. But Amazing. They, yeah, I, yeah, I have a feeling Marcus was the first one. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, yeah. But don't quote me on that. Disc brakes in front, what, drums in the back? Exactly. Uh, so the front is uh, Triumph, Vitesse, and GT6 okay. suspension, as is the steering. Um, but they used a lot of component parts for these cars as well. Yeah, so this is like boutique manufacturing. Yeah. They go and they get the brakes in this and the engine from Volvo, and they, get, and they were just... That's why I love that era of English sports cars when there weren't a lot of federal rules. You could just build whatever you wanted. And there were so many little shops in, in, in uh, Wales and dotted all across the country. Guys just building caterums and various cars. TRW, not TRW. Uh, TVR. TVR, rather. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, just all these small companies building their own unique sports cars. And, and this is certainly one of the most unique. It's, body is fiberglass, correct? Yes, all fiberglass, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because you got a little, couple of little stress marks here. Yeah, I think this is from the heat, although I've, I've really only just bought the car, actually. I only, only had it for about five months. Oh, okay. So I'm not really sure where this originated, but it looks like heat, doesn't it, on both sides? Well, it, it's character. Just I think character. it's character. That's what I said. Now, you've you been searching for Marco? I mean, what, what did you have previous to this that made you... I've had quite a lot of cars, um, all, let's say, budget sports, sports cars. Right. Um, and I've been searching for the perfect one that I can use every day. So I've had Datsun 240Zs, uh, Lotus Esprit, uh, MGs, Triumphs, right. you know, all that sort of thing, and Porsche 911s. Right. And I've never quite found the one that I can fix myself that's sort of practical to use every day. Uh, so I've ended up with this. This isn't practical to use every day. Um, so. No, why is it not practical? In LA, it's too low because the trucks don't see you. Yeah. I think that's <laughs> yeah. part of the problem. Yeah, you get under the wheel, yeah. And jumping in and out of it at supermarkets, you know, you end up sort of falling in and out because it's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's very low. Yeah, you get out of your hands and knees, yeah. You can't make a graceful exit. Yeah. yeah. But I do think it ticks a lot of boxes for me. And, uh, it, you know, it looks beautiful. You can, you can fix it yourself. It's so simple. And compared to those other cars you mentioned, this is the one that really stands out. I mean, yeah. when you drive this, just as I approached you, and I imagine, and I knew what it was, I imagine most people have no idea, and they come up and, what, what do they think it is? Do they think it's a kit car? What do they think it is? You know, there is a tradition in, in, in L.A., as you know, of, of guys shouting at you at traffic lights, hey, what is it? Yeah. You, know, you get that all the time, don't you? Well, see, I don't mind that. You know what I hate? No, it's nice. Hey, how much? And I go, <laughs> you know what it is? No, but how much you want for it? Well, why don't you ask me what it is first or before? How, how much is that worth? I say a million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a million. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to say. Yeah, you get that all the yeah. time. It's a rare car, especially here in the States. I mean, they only made 1,200 GTs in total and fewer than 200 with a steel chassis. Okay. And only a handful made it to America. Yeah. Hmm. Now, is the steel chassis considered the most valuable? I think that's open to debate. Yeah. I think a lot of people want the steel chassis ones because of the bigger engines. Right. But, uh, but actually, the earlier wooden chassis ones are very sought after. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, the purists are probably like that. Yeah. But still, it's 1,600, 1600 pounds. Ar I think around about that, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty amazing. Long. All right, let's, let's close this okay. down again. And let's, let's go around to uh, what I think is, uh, I love the rear of this thing. I love that, that cam back, which was not controversial, but unusual back in the, you know, there was prior to this, all cars had that sloping tail. They thought that was more aerodynamic. And then I think Pete Brock introduced it, remember in the, in the, in the Cobra Coupe? Yes. And they realized aerodynamically this is much better. Mm. And it's a sexy looking car. It's nice, isn't it? I, I, I do like the back of them. Yeah, not a lot, not a lot of bumper protection. No. No, no, no. no. But they did have bumpers, didn't they? They did, they had tiny little bumpers, yeah. thin things. But it's not the kind of car you want to come to a crashing halt in. No, no, no. Well, it's just the word crashing in this. You don't want to be there. Yeah, just a straight. They would have to take you out through the sunroof. <laughs> so the company went out of business in 72, 
that what it was? That yeah, was 72, and partly because of the U.S. federalization, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's, no, just, that's yeah. even good. I mean, you show up with this, they go, get out of here. That's it's exactly like, what they said. Yeah, you're not yeah. going to reach it. Remember, headlights had to be a certain height, so they'd be literally higher than the car. Yeah, it was a shame. I, I love this era when you could just design something, and yeah. it was pure design. You could put it on the road. Now... Oh, the taillights are too low, the headlights aren't high enough. I mean, every conceivable kind of, I realize it's all for safety, but yeah. this is a car show and it's about the style. And, and, and this is really, I think, a stylish car. And a really unusual car. It really doesn't look like anything else. You know, you look at a lot of other cars and you go, mm, the front is kind of jag and the rear is kind of alpha. And mm. This does not look like anything else I'd ever seen. That's, mm. that, that's what's sexy and fun about it. It's really, really cool. And yeah. there affordable aren't they oh very much so very yeah. much so yes, yes. i after i saw you i went i went to the classifieds <laughs> and under fifty thousand dollars yes 20 to 40 depending on what but you look at it if this had an italian nameplate on it yeah. it might be two hundred fifty thousand dollars if this was an alpha you know sprint special or something oh my god it'd be 150 so it, it's 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 really unique it is, and I think you do get the power, and you get the performance, and the mm -hmm. handling, and the Italian looks, and the rarity right. for, for, you know, as you say, a tenth of the price. So I think it's, uh, at the moment, I think it's a bit of a bargain. 50,000 buys you a really good one. You know? Now, is this the original color? No, it was originally chrome yellow, this one. Chrome yellow, that doesn't sound like an English. Mm. A bit American, right? Yeah, yeah. Brash a, for us. Yeah, a bit brash, yes. <laughs> brash, yes, that's exactly. A little exact, brash for little us. Brash, right? yeah, exactly, yes. I don't, Chrome yellow does seem a bit odd, but this yes. is a very nice color. This is much. Is that a lotus color? It is a lotus color, okay. yes. Okay, yeah. Yes. Now, those tail lights look familiar to me, but I don't know what they're from. Obviously, something English. What, what, are, what are they off of? The Lotus Elan. Oh, okay. Lights. And your gas filler right there. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool to have that there. This looks like the gas filler that would have come. Uh, the early Cobras had that with the key and this, this button right here yep. to open it, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, well, yeah, they just bought whatever parts were, were available. They did. They had, as you say, a parts bin and whatever was, whatever was available at the time. I mean, the, the bonnet catches are, uh, are, I remember from when I had a Triumph GT6. Yeah. So. Oh, the GT6. I like those. Those are yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, is there an active owner's club for this? Very much so. And um, they're, they're a very dedicated following. Um, both here and back in the UK, are mainly you, in the UK. Are you in the club? I am. Okay. And actually, I must say, it's the 60th anniversary of Marcos this year. Oh, okay. So it's cause for big celebration, and there's going to be a huge rally in the UK. A huge rally? Well, big, yeah. by our standards. Well, see, that's what I love about English car. One day, when I bought my Tatra, yeah. I saw an ad in a British magazine, Tatra Owners Club for me. Ba, 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 ba. I said, so I called the guy, and what's this? Oh, yes, we, we have a part scheme. We'll put out a magazine, and we'll have a Christmas party every year. And like, oh, okay. Okay, well, I'll join. Oh, wonder, oh, wonderful, wonderful. You know, okay. So I said to the guy, uh, how many people in the club? He said, with you, four. <laughs> Including I, you, sir? Oh, yeah, four. four. So with us, only four. I said, okay, so yeah. I, I, I said, <laughs> where do you hold the Christmas party? In your garage? I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's conservative. Yeah, but I'm thinking he's got hundreds of owners. He goes, with you, that all makes four. Oh, four. Okay, well, fine, put me down. I guess I'm one of the founding members. Wonderful. Yeah. So they've got a. a a table in a pub. Yeah, a exactly, exactly. That's the way well, we do it over there. Now tell me about the wheels. Are the wheels from something else as well? No, they are original Marcos wheels, actually. Oh, really? They made their own wheel? They made their own magnesium wheels, and you yeah. can see the inserts. They have the little Marcos logo. Gotcha, on the gotcha. I mean, they really were conscious of weight saving. I mean, uh, I mean, a steel wheel would have been a huge cost savings, but obviously they went with magnesium. Yeah. They really were intent on keeping the weight down, really dedicated to that. It, yeah. It's such a great looking car. Mm. And it's a shape that you could actually make even bigger if you wanted to because of, it holds up well. The proportions are nice. I agree. I think the proportions are great. And you know, as I said, the federalization helped kill this car because they were impounded at the ports in, I think, 71 or 72. Right. Which, which had a pretty devastating effect on a small uh, company like Marcos. I'm but you imagine now if they had yeah. impact bumpers and everything. I'm surprised they didn't sell it as a kit, you know. They did. As, oh, oh, they did? Yeah. Oh, okay. some, some were sold as kits, yes. So that would get past the federal regulations. 
and of course the engine the, the smog and oh god it was a shame but yeah. it really is that era of specialist car building and this is plastic correct yeah it's perspex yes okay yeah, yeah. we call a plexiglass what do you call it plexiglass yeah perspex perspex all right yeah, same thing let's, yeah. Say, let's and, agree on that and this is a webasto is that how you say that so yep. sunroof is just coming. okay yeah webasto sunroof yeah now is that an option or do they all come with that most of the ones I've seen have it. Right. So I'm going to say that that was a factory standard. Yeah. Um, and do you get a lot of engine heat from this? Is it you get a terrible amount? Oh, really? It, it, it is very hot. Now, because of this engine, I think there's an option to put air conditioning in because yeah. the engine's actually quite short. Right. The Volvo engines, it's more difficult because it's a long six cylinder engine. Right. So that could be something to do for this. Oh, it had a six cylinder? Uh, well, yeah, the Volvo engine ones. Or a five the, cylinder? Uh, no, straight six. Oh, the straight six? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this is probably the most desirable model, isn't it? Steel chassis, the, the Ford V6, which, of course, in England, that's like the 327 Chevy here. It's, yeah. Everything's available for it, right? It's, it's a very popular engine. It was. And you can put Weber's on it. You can do whatever you want, you yes. know? So cool, cool. Yeah. Well, can we take it for a ride? Yeah. I'm anxious. Do you think I'll fit in this thing? I don't know. Let's, let's see if I can fit in this thing. Okay, what's the idea? One leg in first? Yeah. All right, there we go. Hang on. Hang on, lads. Let me get my leg over. Oh, all right, there we go. Is it, it, hey, is it? no problem. Comfortable? Ah. Uh, actually, once you're in, actually, it is very comfortable, actually. Not bad at all. Now I have to shut the door. Well, you look down that long hood. Yeah. Daytona or something with that long hood up there. I love the look of the bonnet bulge. And it's a good driving position, isn't it? It like is. Down, I mean, you like feel this. like you're bounding over the waves with the front of the <laughs> ship going up, you know. That's exactly. And it's a perfect day for this car because it's a little cool today in Los Angeles. Yes. Probably around 50 degrees, something like that. Yes. And there's just enough engine heat to go, oh, that's very enjoyable. Yeah. It's perfect, it's yeah. perfect. We'll wait until April or May and it's it, it's unbearable. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. unbearable to be in. So this axle is 377. Yeah. There's a lot of low end torque. Yeah, it's got plenty of power. Yeah. Get some heat in the engine now. Yeah. And you got quite a bit of pedal travel, don't you? Look at that. Yes. It's funny, it seemed like this should be so much more expensive than a TR3 or an MG or something. Because it's, it seems more exotic, but it's really not. Maybe a few bucks more, but not crazy. What's top speed, about 120 maybe? I think officially probably something like that, but yeah, I, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't really dare. It feels a bit shaky, you know, it starts to shake at that kind of speed, really. Yeah, but you drive through it, you go through that, yeah. and you get a, yeah. What about potholes in LA? Well, yeah, you gotta be. <laughs> That's the problem. But with that hood bulge, it makes you look like it, from the driver's seat, it's like you got a big 427 overhead cam engine in there. Well, the, the people I've shown this engine to, they go, well, where is the engine? They think it's small, because in America here, you're used right. to big, great big engines. Right. But uh, I think at the time, you know, the V6 was, was a... No, that's impressive. I mean, the Noble has a V6. It's basically the same V6, isn't it? I don't know. But, I think so. But I, mean, I know they called this the Essex Lump. The yeah. Lump, because it was so big to, uh, to us Brits back in the day. But in England, a v the V6 is like our V8. Right. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 and V6s are becoming more popular now. The Ford GT is a V6. Oh. It's fantastic. It's all right. Yeah, I like it very much. I love the, uh, the Smith styles. It's nice, isn't it? Halfway down. They go halfway. Which I think is plenty. 
Yeah, oh, that's actually that's not bad. Yeah, you don't need windows to go all the way down. That's a modern thing. No, like the the Kuntaj only goes down this much. You, if you go to Wendy's, you got to get the single patty <laughs> because you can't slip a double burger through the through the slot, you know. Excellent. And you can't get the drink through there. Yeah, right? that's, you know. That goes through the sunroof. Yeah. Oh, you can keep your hand through the <laughs> you can go through the top of the sunroof. Yeah. You know, to me, it's all about how a car makes you feel when you drive it, and, and you feel like you're in something bigger and more substantial. You know what I mean? I mean, it's it's a real racy sort of feeling. Yes. You get a lot of road feel through the car, and it's a, and you put your foot in it. Look, I'm in third gear, and then the other English car of this bit, that would be second gear. You know what I mean? It, yeah. I mean, it pulls quite well. It, it's. Uh, I really enjoy it. And this seems very Italian with the leather covered uh, transmission tunnel with the ashtray up here. Yeah, you know? little ashtray. I like the ashtrays that hold one ash. Yeah, one know? little ash. Yeah, one ash, that's it. <laughs> but I can see driving this cross country, you know, especially yeah. if the country is England, you know, where it's not a lot of freeway. I mean, it's quite comfortable. It's not really that loud. I don't find it obtrusive. and. Aerodynamically, you just sort of feel the wind going over you, you know? There's not a lot of wind noise in this thing. But it's amazing how how huge little Hondas and stuff look. I don't when, know. When they pass, yeah. It's very funny. It's really big. Yeah, I imagine driving this in England, you know, it's a bit chilly and foggy and rainy. So you're sort of, you're in, you're, you're in this car, you know? And it, it just, it's just a comfortable place to be. I like the seats are part of the chassis, isn't it? Yeah. It's a little bit cut into the frame. Yeah. And then you move the pedal. Yeah, my friend said it's like being in business class. You've got this big leather thing next to you. Yeah, and it's yeah. quite comfortable. It's not too much room, but... Right, right, yeah. yeah. No, in England, I think it, the, the idea of it's great, but, it, you know, there's a lot of rain in England. And right. I don't know if I'd like to be driving this in the rain too much. No? Is it waterproof, or is it... No, uh, I don't know, because I haven't taken it out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I imagine not. The fiberglass is not going to rust, and when you have one with the wood frame, other than the termites, you got no problem. That's right. <laughs> you got the wood lice. But it's not cramped. The car feels much bigger inside than it is. And you, your relationship to the windscreen is about what it would be in any other car. It's not like you're right here, you know? No. It's, uh, for the period, it's, it, it feels perfect to me. Oh, yeah. It's one of the best yeah. driving positions, I think. Did they ever build any left-hand drive? Oh yeah, they did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They built them specifically for the states, and they tried to import them. Uh, they, they succeeded in importing some, and then, as yeah. you say, some got stuck in customs. I know some guys go crazy driving on this. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me either. Oh, well, you grew up in it, yeah. Yeah. But on this side of the road, it's fine as well. When I go to England and I drive, and I get to the roundabout, then get all screwed up sitting on the other side. Or I go to step off the curb, I'm looking, yeah, the car's coming the other way, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's an art to uh, navigating around yeah. cars. Actually, I don't find the heat on, it's not that much heat coming out of it. No. This is just one of those cars you never see in motion. Yeah. You know, I, most times when you see them, it's a static picture, so you get no idea how big or small it is. That's right. I mean, I, before I bought this, I'd actually never driven one, and I was slightly concerned that yeah. it might be too small or too, right, right, to drive. Yeah. But actually, I find it okay, and I'm fairly tall. Yeah, yeah. No, um, it's... And it's comfortable to be in. Yeah, it is a very comfortable seat. I think this is something a '60s Playboy would do. Yes, exactly. Do you feel like a '60s Playboy right now driving it? Well, I grew up in the 60s and I was a playboy. No, I'm not a playboy. But it's, uh, no. It's, what do the English call it? A CAD's car? Is that what you yeah, call it? Yeah, very much so. A CAD, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, actually, no. To me, this is a real proper sports car. Because yeah. a playboy would buy something that looked like a sports car, but really wasn't, you know, it was more for picking up girls, whatever. Yeah, that's These right. were race cars that you could drive on the street. I yeah. mean, they were. People weren't racing with these, and as I remember, they did quite well, didn't they? Absolutely, they, they, they did. They yes. took us to Le Mans, right? I think they did. As I remember, I remember reading in Road and Track and those magazines back in the '60s, and thinking how exotic it was. Well, I know Jackie Stewart used to drive Mark buses uh, early on. 
I like Jackie. He's a great guy. Yeah, I, you great. know, I did a couple of TV things with him, a couple of shows, and you know, he's always got the proper Scottish tart. Yeah, and, yes, and the yes. whole, you know, you know. Yeah. Because I say, my mother's from Scotland, so I really? always, I always enjoy the Scottish, and they always have that real uh, sense of pride and Scottish heritage and all that. Yeah, very and, much so. yeah, yeah, he's a he's a character. Those alcohol fires, Jay, little bitch you put out, you can't see the flames. You know? <laughs> yeah. Always very, you know, graceful and, 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 and classy. I always see him at the, at the at, you know, Laguna Seca. And mm. it, very friendly to everybody, very cordial, you know, none of that get away from me nonsense. Yep. I mean, and he's a, he's a real car guy, you know, I mean, yeah. I guess that goes without saying, but yeah. he, uh, yeah, a real gentleman. Well, I like this car. It's very enjoyable to drive. I'm glad you like it. Oh, it really is. It's exactly... I'm glad I was not disappointed. Because I get a lot of cars, and they're, they have a kit car, kit carish feel to it, you know? Yeah. A bit of rattling and, uh, you know, big slab of wood for a dashboard. And you know, they're just not... No, no this refined. is a, this is a yeah. proper. I mean, this feels like this was built by engineers. You know, even though it, it's a an inexpensive car, which is what I love too. It wasn't some hundred thousand dollar thing, because you can make an expensive car easier than you can make an inexpensive car. Yeah. You just get the best stuff. You know, when you have to use your head, you know, use the long tail lights and somebody else's brake and somebody else's front end, and and it all works. I mean, that's really good engineering. I'm glad to hear you say that. I think I think us uh, Mark us owners will be flattered, and especially on the 60th anniversary year, it's great that you. And where does the name Marcos the come from? Well, it's uh, a portmanteau of Jim Marsh. Oh, and of Frank course. Costin. All oh, right, Marsh. Of course, you know. Mark, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Marsh yeah. and Costin. Yeah. Initially, like was named as some Philippine dictator, you know, but yeah, with a shoe collection. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, no, she came after. You're right, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think you'll hold on to this car for a long time. I don't think you'll find anything else in, in this price range that can match this. And with the, with tweaking, you can even get quite a bit more horsepower out of it. I want to thank my guest, Frazier Douglas. Thank you for bringing this wonderful piece of classic English engineering to my garage. Only in England could this have been built. And that's what I find so fascinating. It really is everything I thought it would be. I was not disappointed at all. You know, that whole, sometimes you don't want to meet your heroes because you're hardly disappointed. But this is exactly what I thought it would be. Tight, small, fast, handles well, classic style, classic engineering. Thank you so much. Thank when, you. When I saw you at the car show and all these people gathered around, I said, I got to go up to that guy and see if he'll come to the garage. So, <laughs> thanks a lot. Thank you, Jay. And Thank we'll you. see you guys uh, next week.